The Harbor Freight Mini Lathe does have an auto feed. Um, it's this lever right here. It's combined with the threading. Um, it's, you use the same um, lever for the auto feed and I'll show you how it works. So there's gears um, in the back of the headstock um, that connect the spindle to um, underneath here, there's a thread. Um, and so right now the half nut lever is engaged. Uh, like the diagram shows the teeth are engaged and um, nothing's moving. Um, that's because it's locked to the static thread under here. But of course, if we were to rotate the truck, now we see the whole carriage is moving. And as soon as we disengage, um, as we move the chuck, uh, nothing is moving uh, because the half nut underneath here is not engaged anymore, um, as the picture indicates. This is underneath the weight of the lathe. That's the lead screw, um, and I'm spinning the chuck right now. And it spins the lead screw. While the half nut lever is disengaged, you'll notice this dial here is spinning. And the ratio that this spins relative to the chuck is determined by the gears in the back. And that determines um, rotations of the lead screw to rotations of the chuck. So with the lever disengaged, if you notice the dial is turning. As soon as we engage the lever though, um, also sometimes the teeth don't mesh, you just have to rotate the chuck a little bit until they do. Um, and now as we rotate the chuck, the dial is no longer turning, but the um, this z-axis knob is and as soon as we disengage it now the dial starts turning again the reason for this dial here is so that you can always engage um, the half nut lever here on the same spot uh, so say you if you always engage it here on the number one then it'll always grab on the same place on the lead screw um, and then if you're cutting a thread, you'll be able to deepen that cut um, over and over again, um, guaranteeing that you're cutting in the same spot each time. Um, but for power feed, it really doesn't matter where you start because normally you're starting off the edge of your part. Um, so the dial is really um, not important for power feed, only for threading. This is the back of the headstock of the machine. And this is where the gears live um, that determine the speed of the lead screw. And it's just these two screws here. Um, inside we see um, this whole mechanism, um, which is connected directly to the chuck. And then this down here is the lead screw. These gears um, all stay in place, um, but then these gears here, um, and one um, that you can also put, um, oh, right here. These are all interchangeable. Um, Obviously there is no gear right here right now, but there are different orientations that might use a gear there. And depending on the sizes that you put uh, in these different spots, that'll determine um, how many rotations the lead screw takes um, for every rotation of the chuck. And that determines um, how fast um, the Z axis moves relative to the spindle. Conveniently, the back panel here has a chart that has all of the different gear arrangements um, for each um, threading pitch. Um, but if you're doing power feed, the threading pitch um, is just, you're just going to want to go uh, basically as steep as possible. Uh, so a lot of threads per inch. These are all the gears I have uh, that would um, go onto these shafts in different locations and would adjust uh, this ratio here. And uh, so we're gonna have to get some large gears and small gears. Um, in order to make the shaft turn slowly. Most of the time you really don't want to be running this with a cover off um, because anything could get caught here in the gears. Um, but I'm just gonna run it for a second. I have the uh, half nut lever engaged. You can see all the gears turning and the carriage is moving. This knob right here uh, reverses the direction of the auto feed. So right now I'm turning the chuck downward, so it'll be forward. And you can see the lead screw um, gears also moving in the same direction. Although if I pull this back and move it down, you can see now we've introduced another gear into this whole um, system. And so what that does is it reverses um, the direction without changing the ratio. So now I'm turning the truck down 
in the forward direction and the lead screw gear is turning up um, instead of down. Um, and that would cause now the carriage to move backward in the positive Z direction as the, the truck is moving forward. This uh, lever um, in the back, um, it's kind of confusing having two, two of them back here, but this is um, just for um, high and low speed um, and just flip it. Um, sometimes it might get sort of caught here. Um, if you rotate the truck, uh, it'll it'll uh, click right into place. Um, and so what that does is it changes um, the speeds that are displayed up here. If it's in low gear, then it goes from zero to 1100 RPM. And if it's in high gear, then it goes all the way up to 2500. Um, but the low gear does get um, better torque um, so I typically keep it in low gear. So right now, uh, the ratio is um, kind of slow. Um, the fact that you can see this turning um, as much as it is while the truck is going that slowly um, means it probably won't work very well for auto feed because it's trying to take a very large, um, lar large pass. Um, and so for auto feed, you're gonna want the ratio um, to be a lot different. Um, so that it only travels a little bit with each rotation of the chuck. And so to do that, um, I'm going to be changing out some gears. I actually won't do anything shown here on the chart um, because it only goes up to 52 threads per inch, which comes out to about 20 thousandths per revolution, which I think is still pretty, um, pretty heavy for a um, auto feed. See, I actually have modified my um, my gears back here, some of these screws aren't original, um, but it should be fairly the same. Um, just wanna make sure you don't lose these screws. And there's some of the gears. Um, also take these off, and I think this should be able to stay the same. And now this should also just come off. And so now um, we can see uh, this gear um, was engaged, and this was just sort of covering over here. Uh, where a gear would sometimes go, um, but it just uh, takes up the slop whenever you're in an orientation um, like this, and you'll have three gears instead of four gears. Um, so that's what this is. It's, I guess it's not a gear. Um, and so now we can rearrange with some of these larger gears. Um, so in order to go slow, we'll want to go from a small gear to a large gear. And in order to get this to fit and mesh with the gears, there's a nut behind here um, that you can loosen that will cause this to be able to slide. There we go. And so now uh, we can slide this into meshing here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one too. Uh, this is shaft A. And now we can go ahead and put our larger gear on here. Now there's a keyway that you have to line up. Um, there we go. And now we have these two gears connected. Um, and I also loosened up the back half of this so this can slide, um, which we'll need to do in order to get these two engage. Um, we'll also have to loosen this up. This is called the banjo. Um, to rotate it up into meshing as well. I'm gonna put a little gear uh, along with these, the spacer and keyway, I mean key stock over here. Uh, that'll engage with this. This is going to loosen the banjo, this bolt right here, uh, which will allow us to adjust um, how the gears mesh. So now um, it can move in these two directions. I find it easiest to first um, to slide it up here to measure this gear and then rotate it up um, to mesh with uh, the gears back here. So this is the fastest setting, goes from a large gear to a small gear and then the same thing again. For a power feed, you're going to want the slowest setting. Um, so instead, it'll be going from a small to a large and then uh, same thing again. So the small gear will go on the top um, and then we will have combination of 
a small and large gear um, with the large gear meshing um, with this one uh, and then large gear here on the bottom with the addition of the key and spacer. So now I'm going to go ahead and screw um, these caps back on, make sure the gears don't slide off, and also have to tighten the banjo down in both places. And now, with all the gears meshing, you want to go ahead and tighten up the banjo. Make sure everything is nice and tight, um, and now the gears uh, all feel pretty stable. And now when we turn on the spindle, you'll notice this is moving much slower. Now we want to make sure and cover it back up so things don't get caught in the gears. Uh, we'll try to cut something. So now I've got a piece of steel in here. I'm going to try to take a pass with auto feed. Um, there it is. It's cut. Um, that was all with the auto feed. Um, and you want to make sure, it's very important you don't hit the chuck. Uh, if you don't turn the auto feed off in time, uh, of course, you could damage your chuck. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's cut. Um, looks pretty good. Um, and of course, if you want to change the, um, the rate, the feed rate, uh, you could try to mess around with the gears a little bit and see if you find something you like better for the material you're working with. Um, but I find that um, the slower the slower feeds um, work a lot better. So I'll demonstrate it again. Um, you can watch as I uh, flip the uh, half nut lever here. So those are the basics on how to use the auto feed um, and the uh, combination of the threading um, tool here on the Harbor Freight Mini Lathe.